Good morning, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Dr. Libby Saunier, and I'm the Executive Director of the Louisiana Policy Institute for Children. As an independent source of data, research, and pertinent information for policymakers, the Louisiana Policy Institute for Children works to shed light on the state of early care and education in our state. Alongside our partners, the Policy Institute has been surveying Louisiana parents with young children as part of a larger effort to help understand the child care arrangements, needs, and experiences of families in Louisiana. This year's report, Just Out of Reach, Louisiana's Working Families Continued Struggle to Access and Afford Child Care, was compiled from the survey findings from October 18th to November 1st, 2023. This report is especially important as the federal government's failure to address early care and education funding after the expiration of stimulus funds has resulted in the loss of thousands of child care seats in our state and around the country. I'm grateful you all can be here today to hear from our panelists as they share the top takeaways and insights from this survey. Before I introduce our moderator for today's press conference, I want to take a moment to thank the Louisiana Department of Education, United Way of Southeast Louisiana's Women United and Agenda for Children for helping make this work possible. At this time, it's my honor to introduce today's moderator, Charmaine Cassiope, Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer of the United Way of Southeast Louisiana. Thank you for leading today's program today, Charmaine. Thank you for that introduction, Libby, and thank you to the entire Policy Institute team for hosting today's virtual event. It's indeed my honor to serve as moderator for today's program as we share findings from the Policy Institute's latest report, Just Out of Reach, Louisiana's Working Families Continue to Struggle to Access and Afford Child Care. This survey provides many helpful insights into the continued needs and challenges of families with young children in Louisiana which is why United Way of Southeast Louisiana and Women United continue to support this important work and mission. Throughout today's program, I'd like to encourage each of you to utilize the chat box to share any questions you may have. There will be dedicated time at the conclusion of this event for question and answer session where you'll be able to, we will be able to attempt to answer any and all questions you may have. With that, it is now my extreme pleasure to now welcome our first panelist, Amanda Robinson, parent leader from Natchitoches Parish. Please join me in welcoming Amanda to today's program. Thank you for that introduction, Charmaine. It is an honor to be with you all today. Year over year, survey results have found that Louisiana families with young children rely on child care to support children, parent employment and education. To provide a bit of background, 85% of responding parents, whether working or in school, full-time and outside of the home, families with young children rely heavily on some type of formal child care outside of the home. Formal child care options include child care centers, Preschool, preschools in a school, Head Start or Early Head Start, family or home-based child care providers, and employer-sponsored child care at a workplace. In the survey, over 80% of parents reported utilizing child care for 30 or more hours per week. 25% of parents said it was difficult to find their current child care arrangements, but over 70% of the parents expressed interest in additional resorts to help with making child care decisions. Many parents also find that they have few options for child care. Also, one third of parents indicate st still needing to need child care during a typical work week, and one tenth one in 10 said they use their current child care arrangements because it was the only option available for them. Half of parents indicate the main reason for us for using their child care arrangement was due to hours of availability. The second priority was the convenience of the location. Other common responses were child interactions with others, supporting kindergarten readiness and the happiness of their children. 
over half of the parents made some sort of adjustments to work or school schedule to provide childcare in the previous six months. For example, 50% of parents either had to work fewer hours or had to arrange alternating schedules in order for their child to have care. 75% of parents re reported having to have take at least one day off of work in the prior three months because of childcare disruptions. Parents with family income below $20,000 a year were also almost twice as likely to quit their jobs in order to have childcare. Families with young children need childcare to work and go to school. Lack of reliable childcare leads to costly parental absences for Louisiana businesses. Specifically, a $762 million annual loss from work, missed work, turnovers, and other related costs, and staggering $1.3 billion annual loss to the Louisiana economy. This is the issue that impacts all of us and not just all of us, not just all of us that have kids or young children at home. Thank you so much, Amanda, for sharing with us these important findings. It's economic impact. This is just so important. I now would like to introduce and welcome Jamie Polisola, who's from St. Landry Parish and who ha happens to be a strong parent leader. Welcome, Jamie. Hi, thank you for the kind introduction. I'm so grateful to be here today. Um, this latest survey shows that the cost of childcare remains high, with childcare costing the average Louisiana family more than $8,700 a year. Rates are especially high for families paying for childcare and not receiving any type of subsidized care. On average, their monthly cost of childcare was $665 per child per month, or $15,960 per year for a family with two children. This exceeds what it costs for one year of college tuition. For families receiving some sort of subsidized childcare, but still having to pay some amount, the average monthly cost of childcare was $395 per month per child. That's $9,491 per year for a family with two children. Almost 50% of families responding to the survey received some, some type of subsidized childcare in 2023 either through enrollment in the Child Care Assistant Program, also known as CCAP, and or a free child care program. As a reminder, these families are still responsible for making up the difference between what a CCAP subsidy will cover and what providers charge in tuition. While we saw a decrease in cost for families on subsidized care compared to last year, still almost 60% of parents who responded this year were concerned about being unable to afford childcare. This was especially so for families with incomes between $20,000 and $75,000 a year. As we can see, even with recent expansions to publicly funded programs like CCAP, affordable, high quality early care and education still remains out of reach for many families. Thank you so much, Jamie. It is indeed helpful for us to see firsthand just how high the cost of childcare is for families across the state of Louisiana. Whether you're dialing in today from Louisiana or perhaps join, uh, joining with us today from afar, we want to thank you for being with us today. I'd like to remind each and every one of you to utilize the chat box with any and all questions you may have. Next, please join me in welcoming our next parent leader from Caddo Parish, Angela Turner. Welcome, Angela. Thank you, Charmaine. <clears throat> 
The Policy Institute's latest parent survey shows that working families benefit from increased support and child care continues to be unaffordable for the most who need it, for those who need it most. In 2023, nearly 50% of parents indicated having trouble paying for basic household expenses, including utilities, child care, food, and clothing in the prior six months. While these numbers are high, they are disproportionately impact families in certain regions and income brackets. For example, parents in Southwest Louisiana and those with family incomes below $50,000 per year were most likely to have trouble paying for basic household expenses. When looking at current avenues for support, over 40% of parents claimed or plan to claim child excuse me, school readiness tax credits for child expenses on their 2023 Louisiana tax returns. Data from the United Way Alice report shows that child care is often the most expensive item in a family's budget. Subsidies such as the state school readiness tax credits for child care expenses can also help ensure that families particularly low-income families, can afford care for their young children without having to borrow or forgo necessities. Fortunately, at the federal level, Congress is considering a proposal to expand the child tax credit. If approved, this could pull many of Louisiana families out of poverty and allow parents to focus more on building a stronger family than worrying about whether they should buy groceries or send a child to child care. Thank you so much, Angelia. We have one final speaker with us today. Please join me in welcoming Jen Roberts, CEO of Agenda for Children, for some closing remarks. Thank you, Charmaine. And thank you to all the presenters, stakeholders, board members, members of the media, uh, our sponsors, and members of the Policy Institute team and our partners for participating in today's important discussion. This body of research on early care and education clearly shows that investing in early care and education allows our caregivers to go to work and to contribute to the economy. It supports businesses who are seeking a reliable workforce. It ensures kindergarten readiness. It prepares children for long-term economic success and even prevents the likelihood of future criminal activity. To ensure that all of these benefits exist now and in the future, Louisiana must do three things. The first, we must continue to increase state investments in early care and education and expand access to high quality childcare, especially for children birth through age three. And that is to, in order to ensure that our children and, and their working families across and their employers across the state are truly supported. The second thing is that we need to support our local governments who are generating revenue for early care and education, and to do so through continued state investment in the Louisiana Early Childhood Education Fund. The third is finally, help families more easily learn about, find, and connect with high quality early care and education providers in their community. With these types of investments, we'll see children better prepared for success in school and in life. Working families and caregivers can maintain workforce participation. Employers can have a reliable workforce with minimal interruptions and communities throughout the state will enjoy robust employment rates, economic growth and tax revenues. I'd like to hand it back over to Libby to now lead our Q&A. Thanks so much, Jen, and thank you to all of our speakers for taking time out of your busy day, especially to our parents who took time away from jobs to be here with us today to make sure to share these findings. Uh, we will now transition into question and answer portion of today's event, um, and we have our first question from Fair Shape Perkins asking, um, are these just type three or all child care, um, child care I'm thinking availability um, as far as the results. And we did we do have representation from all types of child care arrangements. The majority of them are from uh, child care center, families that utilize child care centers, but we have family families that um, utilize family child care homes and other arrangements as well um, in the survey results. Thank you for that. 
Additionally, I'm seeing a question that says, um, what do parents do if they can't find childcare that they need for their young children when they have to go back to work? And I, Jamie, I'm going to actually punt this to you because okay. you're in a community right now that y'all have, you had a head start um, and it got taken over and you're, you have some issues going on in Melville that I think are appropriate and what we found is part of the results too. Yes, thank you. I can definitely give um, some insight on that question and also just give a little story of my experience um, that I am still currently facing as of today. Um, I live in St. Landry Parish and um, I have a four-year-old that is in Head Start. Well, Head Start was taken over by uh, a new provider and the children just were able to start in January. Unfortunately, now the issue has came up that they do not have a teacher for the four-year-old class for Head Start. What well, Save the Children is the, is the new program. Um, so in, in this case, this affects me because Again, I live in Melville. Um, I, I sell insurance. I'm a life insurance agent. So thankfully, my schedule uh, is very flexible um, because if it was not for this job that I have, then I would not be able to work. Um, my child is actually home with me at this moment. Um, I called today. I called on Monday to see if there was any other centers in this area that I could possibly bring my child to. Um, LeBeau, Port Berry, and Crot Springs are three of the local communities that are near Melville. And I was told that they do not have teachers for the four-year-old class in Melville, LeBeau, and Crot Springs. So it's not only an issue that we're facing here in Melville, it's an issue in uh, a lot of our small communities that we have in St. Landry Parish. So not only do we, we not have a class with Head Start for our children, but we also do not have any childcare centers. Um, the closest one that we have to Melville would be Opelousas which is probably about 40 minutes from me. Um, and I'm zoned for my insurance job. Melville and Palmetto is pretty much my jurisdiction. Um, so I would have to find a daycare in Opelousas and then I'd have to get her there, um, come back to Melville, work, and then go back to Opelousas in the afternoons, pick her up which thankfully I do have a vehicle and I'm able to do that. Um, but this this problem is way bigger than just me. Um, uh, we are a very impoverished community. A, a lot of people don't have vehicles to be able to take their kids to childcare outside of the community. Um, we so want to- That really, okay. what, you're, what you're saying really hits up what we found in- uh, in the survey too, what we also found is that to your point, like you have a job that makes things flexible for you. Um, many parents don't have that kind of, uh, kind of job to be flexible to, to handle these types of situations. And so what we hear consistently through this survey and other surveys is that families are having to quit their jobs to be able to care for their young children. Um, and so I think that that's an important thing to, to pull through here. Amanda, I saw you come off mute and wanted to offer if you need wanted to say something as well. Um, well, in, in Natchitoches Parish, we have a few um, daycares and um, child care centers for kids, but it's also comes when you have the, the teachers that aren't skilled to deal with special needs kids um, and they're not trained enough to have those special needs kids um like with Kyron my son we had uh last year he went to school five days a, a week this year it's down to three days because they had other parishes that closed their special need programs and they have to bust the kids 20 to 30 minutes to our school where the program is still available and it's having the kids cut down to only three days a week and he goes to school from 8.30 to 
Right. So at 12.30, I have to find another alternative to take him to if I'm still at work. So the childcare, and then it's also with them having the training to deal with kids with special needs. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Amanda and Jamie, for leaning into to your lived experiences, because it's the lived experiences of many of our Louisiana families in our state. And while we've all been chatting, we've gotten a few more questions in the chat box. Um, Vanessa asked, how are substitute teachers in child care center setting handled currently in Louisiana? Um, actually, I'm going to kick this to Jen, because there's you have to have qualifications and those types of things to be able to be a floater or substitute teacher. Correct. Um, I think this is really a regional approach and it's also, um, you know, a lot of times people are scrambling, right? And so one of the things is that you typically see not really something like a substitute, you see, you know, directors coming in and subbing or covering, or you have someone who's been background checked, who's already in the existing program, stepping in so that folks can stay in ratio. Um, if there were specific programs, a lot of those things are being developed at the regional basis. So for example, here in Orleans Parish, we have a pilot program that we're um, actually piloting right now with a, another organization that is what we call a guest educator program. So we are actually fully subsidizing the cost of up to 30 hours of guest educator services from an independent agency of folks who are background checked, who are you know, independent folks who have the, the understanding of child development, who understand what um, age appropriate um, things would be and who do this for a full-time job. Um, and that's actually something that we're doing here locally among a subset of our you know, organizations that we work with. You might find something different in East Baton Rouge, but there is not a standardized statewide strategy around um, substitute pools, for example. Thanks so much, um, Jen. I know that y'all worked really hard at Agenda for Children to try to figure this situation out within, with collaboration of um, our child care providers. So thank you so much for that insight. We were additionally asked if we um, share the slides somewhere. What we will do is after the this, we will send an email out to everybody that registered um, so that they can receive the, the recording of this press conference along with the report that um, we pulled all the slate, the data slides from. So we're happy to share that with you all after. Um, former Representative Pat Smith asked, "Are there are indeed a great number, a, a great number of children in various childcare programs? Is there a way to include those in your survey, or are there only getting info from state programs?" We did outreach to all families, so we have really as representative of a sample as we can have of all families in the state of Louisiana. So it's not just um, families that are receiving um, support from the state to receive childcare, it's all families so that we can understand what's happening. Um, and next year, if anybody wants to help us disseminate it, we will absolutely take that because we really do wanna make sure that we're telling the story of as many Louisiana families as, that, as we can. Um, Sabrina asked, how can parents locate affordable yet high quality childcare if they do not meet the low income threshold, however, cannot afford to pay for a full-time childcare out of pocket? Um, this is a greater Baton Rouge area, but I would say this is a statewide issue. Um, and I would also say that, you know, Jen from A Ginger for Children runs uh, as uh, what we call a resource and referral agency that helps families kind of locate um, child care centers. Do you want to talk about the work that you all engaged in with that? Sure. Um, so what we typically do is you can call our offices at any time, but there are 11 child care resource and referral agencies across the state. Um, and we each are responsible. I'm sorry, I said 11. There are eight um, responsible across the state and we each, you know, can counsel families. So sometimes it's seeking um, information on subsidy programs. Sometimes it is seeking um space on vacancies, so understanding where there might be spaces versus not. Um, and other times it might be presuming that you're not actually eligible for programs, but could be. There's actually been a lot of work in the state recently to actually increase the thresholds so that many of our working class and middle income families are actually now eligible. It does not mean that there is necessarily a space available, but our state has actually really raised some of our rates. And so many families who think they are not eligible actually are. 
um, based on some of the you know reforms that have been done, um, many you know responsible by many of the folks on the on the call today and our advocates in our communities. And so we always encourage you to start with a child care resource and referral agency to just simply find out what your options are. And then if not, um, you know, then we can simply, you know, you know, sit down and, and really have a conversation around what you're what you are currently using. We've seen some creative solutions by families, you know, uh, to, you know, go into co-op situations or to figure out if they can go into in-home care where it might be a little bit less expensive than perhaps a, a child care center. But all in all, this still comes back to advocacy, right? Um, we continue in this state to have an affordability and an accessibility problem. And so we, at the end of the day, need to ensure that child care is continued to fund, fund it you know, at, at all levels for all families because all families are struggling with this cost. And um, at the end of the day, we cannot continue to pass on cost to families, full stop. Thanks so much for that, Jen. I also wanna pull in Sherman Cassiope from the United Way of Southeast Louisiana here. The work that they have, have just been so committed to for a number of years related to the Alice population, who we know asset limited income constrained employed, that really make up, if you look at our poverty level of the state and our Alice families, we're looking at 51% of our Louisiana families that are really struggling. Um, and so I'd love, Charmaine, if you just want to highlight some of the work that you all have done at United Way of Southeast Louisiana around this child care piece and affordability. Well, thank you so much, Libby. And United Way has been dedicated to increasing access and affordability for high quality early care and education. As I'm sure many on this call know, um, the work that we're doing with, with policy and advocacy continues to be really important. But I think we take great personal pride in the fact that we are consistently working with partners across Louisiana as we did during the COVID pandemic. Uh, where we actually engaged our partners at Loyola uh, College of Law when we were looking to make sure that our child care centers had access to the resources that were being provided at the federal level. That led us to help them in being able to increase not only their capacity because we are working hand and um, next to them, making sure that they understand the importance of developing the kind of business plan that allows them to build to increase capacity. I can tell you the work that we are doing with United Ways across Louisiana to continue to educate, inform, and inspire not only our um, our citizens, but our legislative delegation members at the federal, state, and local level to understand the challenges that our Alice families are encountering, but more importantly, to really explain to them the enormous responsibility working families have that over a third of their income in most instances are spent just being able to afford high quality early care. So we will continue to fight, we will continue to fund programs, we will continue to invest in high quality early care centers so that we can help to do our part in trying to reduce the high cost of early care and education. So thank you. Thanks so much, Charmaine. And th this is really why we continue to do this parent survey, parent poll, to really get the voices of parents with what they're struggling with. And so when you have partners like Agenda for Children and United Way of Southeast Louisiana, and I see the Budget Project and many others here um, on, on this webinar and this press conference, we have to work together and we have to make sure that the voices of families are always centered in the work because we could think we have the best policy sol solution and we just won't have it because oftentimes things happen to families instead of with families. Another question came up of, do shift workers have particular difficulty finding centers or in home care for children? The answer to that is yes, universally yes across the state. Um, another question came up uh, about what are the long-term implications of child care child care crisis for our communities in our state. The long-term implications of the child care crisis is fundamentally that children won't be prepared to enter into school ready to learn. Right now we have 70% of our kindergartners entering into kindergarten in the state of Louisiana, not quite ready to access kindergarten materials. And we know that dosage matters. So we wanna make sure that we create more access, but also it's an economic issue. We know that Louisiana loses $1.3 billion, that's with a B, annually um, due to childcare breakdowns because parents can't go to school or work. To Jamie's point, she has a, a 
a job that's flexible so she can do what she needs to do. I know Amanda and Angelia every day do what they have to do to meet, meet needs of their family, but it's complicated and it's complex. And so we know that this is an economic issue as well as a child development school readiness issue in our state. Um, also, another question came in about what are some early childhood advocacy groups in the state that I can join? Well, you can join Ready Louisiana, which is a coalition now of 160 organizations that are squarely focused on increased investment in, in our state. We also at the Louisiana Policy Institute for Children have a newsletter that you can sign up for to keep up to date. And I know that Agenda for Children as well has newsletters and help uh, to learn how to engage as well as United Way of Southeast Louisiana. But I would say, you know, join us at Ready Louisiana. It's readylouisiana.org. So it, I will get uh, Victoria to put that in the chat for us of what our coalition's uh, website is. And so please join us because we need voices and we need all voices um, as we continue to fight for increased access to childcare. Um, and so thank you so much for joining us today. Um, thank you again to all the presenters and for all of you for attending. If you have additional questions or you'd like more information about upcoming Policy Institute in, uh, events, please email us at info, info at policyinstitutela.org. To read the full report and learn more about the work of the Policy Institute for Children, visit us at policyinstitutela.org. But before I close out today, I'd like to share some information with you all about Louisiana Early Ed Month, which is part of the reason that we're here today, which, fe which features um, one more event in February. Tomorrow, February 22nd, we invite you to participate as we celebrate social, the Social Media Day of Action. We'll be sharing a social media toolkit with you all following today's event so you can learn how to, to join us on this or tomorrow for the Social Media Day. We hope that you can join us throughout the remainder of Early Ed Month. Uh, we It is a special month. The governor, Governor Landry, declared February is Early Ed Month for the state. Additionally, his executive budget came out which is kind of his blueprint of where he thinks the state should go. And he maintained the $87 million of state investment in his budget. And so we say we need to celebrate that with the realization that we still have, you know, thousands and thousands of children that still need service. And so please engage with us. We need your voice. We need your passion. Um, and thank you again for attending today's press conference. And we hope that you all have a wonderful rest of the week. Thank you.